The Bravest Dog Ever The True Story of Balto by Natalie Standiford and illustrated by Donald Hi, Cook. Oma. Today I want to read to you a book about a dog who became famous. He lived about a hundred years ago in Alaska. It's always very cold in Alaska and that winter it was especially brutal. Are you ready? Oh, hold on, hold on. I said it was cold. Okay, I'm ready. This is a story about a very brave dog. His name was Balto. About 100 years ago, in 1925, Balto lived in Nome, Alaska. Most of the year, it was buried under ice and snow. In the winter, there was no way to travel through all that ice and snow. Not on planes or trains or boats or cars. The only way to travel in Alaska was by dog sled. Balto was a sled dog. He worked for a gold mining company not far from Nome. He helped carry food and tools to the miners. It was a good life for a sled dog. Balto's driver was named Gunner. Gunner made Balto his lead dog. The lead dog runs in front of the team. He follows the trail. All the other dogs do whatever the lead dog does. So the lead dog has to be the smartest and the strongest dog of all. One cold winter day, a terrible thing happened in Nome. Two children got very sick. Their parents called the doctor. He was the only doctor in the whole town. When the doctor saw the children, he was very worried. The children had a terrible sickness. It was called diphtheria. The doctor did not have the medicine he needed. Without the medicine, the children would die. Many other people in Nome would get diphtheria and die too. The doctor knew he had to get some medicine, fast. The hospital in Anchorage in Alaska had the medicine. But Anchorage was 800 miles away. The doctors in Anchorage put the medicine on the train. But soon the train got stuck in the deep snow. And the train was still 700 miles from Nome. The people of Nome held a meeting. Everyone was very scared. What are we going to do? asked the doctor. We have to get that medicine. At last somebody said, what about a dog sled relay? When one team of dogs gets tired, a new team will be ready to take over. The room burst with excitement. That seemed like the quickest way to get the medicine. But the doctor frowned. It will take about 15 days. That's a long time. Too long. Maybe the doctor was right, but there was no other choice. So the mayor spoke over the radio. Please help, he said. We need the best drivers and dogs to help save our town. Gunner heard the mayor on the radio. He knew he had the best dog team and the best lead dog. Balto would come to the rescue. On January 27th, the race from Anchorage to Nome began. 21 dog sled teams were in the relay. Each team waited at a different stop. The first driver took the medicine from the train. He wrapped it in fur to keep it from freezing. Then he drove his dogs as fast as he could to the second stop. He made his run in good time. But soon the wind began to blow hard. The air grew colder. A blizzard was coming and it was one of the worst storms ever. Still, the race went on. Somehow, each dog team made it to the next stop. In one team, two dogs froze to death. So the driver hitched himself to the sled. He helped the rest of his dogs pull through the storm. Gunner and Balto waited at their stop in Bluff. They were going to run 31 miles from Bluff to Point Safety. That was the second to last part of the race. But the storm had slowed things down. Gunnar had been waiting for two days. He didn't sleep. He wanted to be ready to go as soon as the medicine arrived. 
At last, Gunner heard dogs barking. The medicine was here. He put it on the sled with a small stove and a little food. Then he hitched up his dogs. Balto stood proudly in the lead. Gunner cracked his whip. Mush, he cried. That meant go. The team ran out into the snowy night. At first, the team made a good time, but soon snowdrifts blocked the trail. The dogs sank up to their necks in snow. They couldn't move. Some began to panic, but not Balto. He stayed calm. That helped the other dogs, while Gunner dug them out of the snow. At last, the team was on its way again. Then the team crossed a frozen river. The dogs and the sled slipped and skidded on the ice. Oh no! Over went the sled. Gunner got it up again. But the medicine was gone. Wildly, Gunner dug for the medicine. He couldn't see it through the heavy snow. But at last he felt the packets and put it back on the sled. The team kept going across the river. Suddenly, Balto stopped short. Moose, Balto! shouted Gunner. But Balto didn't move. Then Gunner saw why. The ice was cracking. If the team fell into the river, they would all drown. Balto had stopped just in time. Smart dog, Gunner told him. Then he saw that Balto's feet were wet. If they froze, Balto would never walk again. Quickly, Gunner unhitched Balto from the sled. He led the dog to a patch of powdery snow and then rubbed Balto's paws in the powder. Soon they were dry and Balto was ready to go once more. Balto led the team around the cracking ice. At last, they reached solid land again. Were they still on trail? Gunner had no idea. The snow blew so hard, he couldn't even see his own hands. Finally, the storm died down. Gunner saw point safety just ahead. Balto did it, thought Gunner. He couldn't wait to warm his hands by a cozy fire. But all the lights were out at point safety. Was the next driver there? Gunner didn't know. And there was no time to find out, so Gunner and Balto didn't stop. They had never been so tired. But they raced on through the night toward Nome. It was just before dawn. The sky began to glow in the town of Nome. Everyone was still sleeping. Gunner and his team pulled into town. They had made it. Balto was too tired to bark. They had been on the trail for 20 hours straight. They had driven 53 miles. Gunner took the medicine to the doctor. The doctor was surprised. He thought it would take 15 days to get the medicine. But Gunner delivered it after only five and a half days. Thank you, Gunner, said the doctor. You are a hero. No, Balto is the hero, said Gunner. I could not have done it without him. The doctor went right to work. He gave the medicine to all the sick people. In a few days, they would be well. The town of Nome was saved. All over America, people cheered for Balto. And they read about his bravery in the newspaper. Balto was the most famous dog in the world. A year later, the people of New York City put up a statue for Balto. It still stands in Central Park. Lots of children play on the statue. They remember Balto, the bravest dog ever. Balto. You know, I had a grandfather who was only one year old when his father died of diphtheria. That was even before Balto was born. And then he had to grow up with a stepfather who was not very nice to him. But luckily, today, I don't know anyone with diphtheria. And that is because we get shots. You don't like shots? To tell you the truth, I don't like shots either. But when the doctor says I need a shot, I try to be brave. And thankful to the scientists who developed the shot. I hope they keep up the good work. Thanks for listening. See you next time. Stay warm.